Arsenal take on Chelsea at the Emirates. A big chance to go four points clear of Man City. Of course, they'll have two games in hand, but it's all about applying the pressure. Now, I'm here in the AFTV studio, as you can see, not my normal setup because I have been with Turkish and Cecil discussing everything around this game. And in the big preview, one of the things we talked about, go check out the channel, by the way. One of the things we talked about was Declan Rice. Where's he going to play? Do you move him to the eight to get Jorginho and Partey in this team? Do you finally get Partey playing with that midfield of Rice and Erdogan that we wanted to see all season? Or do you get Jorginho back in because he's been very dependable actually in big games when he's played as that six? Or do you actually revert to what Arteta's been doing? I say revert, he's been doing it for the last few games. How about it's in midfield so he can bomb forward a little bit more and Declan Rice just holds as the anchor of that midfield. And it's a good problem to have that you've got a player, a hundred million pound player, Declan Rice, who's so good that he can play multiple positions. But is this actually long term a good thing? I just have a feeling every time we talk about this that as we approach the end of the season, we've seen he's played in multiple positions and done really well in both. I do think come the summer, we need to have a defined role for Declan Rice. And I actually think a new signing is going to be crucial to defining what that is. Now, talking about Declan Rice and the positions he's played this season, you can see here of our transfer marked. He's played 30 games as a defensive midfielder and 14 as a central or call it box-to-box -box midfielder. His output's actually been good. You can see three goals, four assists as a defensive midfielder, three goals, three assists as a central midfielder. So his output's been pretty good. And actually, FB Ref will tell you that his output has been pretty decent as well. When you look at his shooting numbers on FB Ref, he's ranking pretty highly in terms of percentile numbers for some good attacking numbers. And his passing, very good as well, ranking the 90th percentile for passes completed, 95th percentile for medium cart passes completed, Progressive passes in the top 9%. Really, really good numbers there. But you look at his defensive numbers and it would still tell you that actually his strength is in tackles in the middle third, tackles in the defensive third, not always bombing up and down the pitch to try to win the ball, but holding as that anchor to sweep up. And it's something that he's done really well all season. That flexibility has been a really great thing that Declan Rice possesses. It's not, this isn't a video to try and you know, make it out as a bad thing that he's got this flexibility. We did a video, uh, what was it, a week or two ago, after that draw at the Etad, when we talked about how he has been a key part of Mikel Arteta's midfield and his tactical plans to nullify Liverpool and City in different ways. Against City, it was about pressing right up the pitch, just try, try and stop Rodri, where all their ch players kind of funneled through and channeled through. And then against Liverpool, it was more about sitting in front of the back four because that's where they get their better players into pockets and he's there to sweep up with Saliba and Gabriel behind. So the use of Declan Rice has been a really good thing in multiple areas, but I do feel that long term he needs to find a more settled position. We need to decide, is he a six, is he an eight? And yeah, on the odd occasion, you might use him differently. The season might dictate that you mix it up a touch, but I think there has to be a clear position. And actually playing 30 and 14 games in two different positions doesn't feel like we have true clarity on what he's going to be long term. Let me show you some players for Man City and Liverpool. Big players have had big parts to play in both their team successes, but actually have had different roles in the squad. I want to start with Gundogan and show you that here via transfer marks. Yes, he played 210 games as a central midfielder, but he also played 71 as a defensive midfielder and at times got forward into more attacking areas as well. If you go to Jordan Henderson on transfer mark, you can also see he played many, many games central midfielder, 242, but also was their starting six, their starting ball-winning midfielder with 149 games on quite a few occasions as well. Those two players who are brilliant, let's not diminish what Henderson's achieved and let's certainly not diminish the unbelievable quality of Gundogan, they were, though, support acts to other midfielders. And I know it's crazy to say that about the captain of one team and Gundogan, who could do everything, but they were. Gundogan was a support act to Rodri and De Bruyne, really. He wasn't always starting, it was Bernardo Silva. And listen, he also came to the, to the fore and was on the main stage many, many times. But it was about Rodri as the six and De Bruyne the chief creator and Gunnar was amazing at facilitating all of it. And Henderson would facilitate as well what Fabinho would do in midfield and the many other great players there like Thiago and Wijnaldum as well. Now that's not to diminish what they did, but the players that I consider just that level slightly above in importance for their teams in Rodri and Fabinho had more defined roles. If I show you Fabinho on transfer marked, 189 appearances as a defensive midfielder for Liverpool, only 27 at centre-back and one as a more, call it, out-and-out -out central midfielder. You know, he played as a defence midfielder. That was his position. Rodri as well. 238 games as a defence midfielder, six outside of that position. They're very defined roles. And Declan Rice is a £100 million player, £105 may I say, 
that people are looking at to be our Rodri or our Fabinho, our, our difference maker. Now, maybe he is going to be that box-to-box -box player. Oh, there we go, I'm getting messages. Um, maybe he is going to be, you know, that box-to-box. -box. Maybe he will be what Xhaka was to us last season for the long term. That's fine, but like I said, it's defined by the player that we get this summer. And what I mean by that is we are in the market for a central midfielder. We know that. It's been covered loads and Bruno Gamaraz is the latest to be linked. In fact, I talked about all these link to, links in my latest upload on Friday. But who we sign, I think, dictates what the future of some really key midfielders looks like in this team. If we sign a six, Declan Rice is a number eight. If we spend 55 million on Zubamendi, on Frankie de Jong, on whoever it might be, that is a starting, clear defensive midfielder, then I think Declan Rice is going to be that box box for the long term. If we sign an eight, whoever that might be, we've been linked to Bruno Guimaraes, who to be fair plays a six as well. Um, I don't know who it could be. I mean, look at the players last season that went. Let, let's say we picked up a McAllister a year ago, or picked up this summer. We're not getting from Liverpool, you get what I'm trying to say then I think that would define that Declan Rice is going to be a six. But crucially, I don't think it's about whether we just sign a six or an eight. If we sign a number 10, a really creative outlet, someone who, again, looking at last summer's sort of midfield moves, a James Madison, if Florian Verts were available now, I'm not saying he is, I'm talking that profile player, then Rice is not only a starting number six for us, and that's probably where he's going to play long term, but Erdegaard, I think, then becomes the more facilitative midfielder. This season, we've seen a lot more of Erdegaard dropping deep in build-up and being a part of Arsenal's first phase play alongside Declan Rice so that Kai Havertz can get close to the striker. What if we get a more natural, like, heavy, heavy chance creator? I know Erdegaard can be and is. He's a brilliant chance creator. But couldn't he complement a De Bruyne-esque more powerful runner and midfielder who gets really, who gets forward, who gets into the box, but is a supreme creative outlet. They're not easy to find these players, but who we bring in, I think is gonna have a really interesting impact on what Rice and Erdegaard do in the future. And I think that is where this summer gets fascinating for them. But I do believe, and it might be a little, it might be a little reductive to say that, well, you know, Declan Rice is great, but he's got to have a he's got to have one sole position because Arteta has shown that he likes players that can play multiple roles: Ben White, right back and centre back; Havertz up front and in midfield; Saka's played left back, midfield, right winger, but now he's become our starting right winger. That's ultimately where he's you know ended up. Jesus can play across the front three. I just wonder whether. And even Martin Odegaard, like I said, play multiple roles. But I just think a player like Declan Rice, as brilliant as he's been, and I love him, for me, he's been our player of the season. I wonder if long term, it actually becomes about cementing a spot. Going, great, you can do all these things. And we might need to use that sometimes. But ultimately, you're our starting number six and we're going to build around that. And I think deciding that either gives us clarity for the transfer window or assessing the options that are available, seeing who the best midfielder we can pick up is, bring them into the club, might actually be what gives us clarity on Declan Rice's position. He's a superb player, fantastic, he's got all this talent, can play in multiple roles, and for this game against Chelsea, I would actually move him to that number eight position, not have him as the six as he's been playing recently, so that we can have him alongside a party with Jorginho. This is my 11, I would actually go for Jorginho, I've changed my mind since forever Arsenal, um, and I would keep Jesus and Trossard in the side along with Kivior. But I'm not sure that's where his long-term future is. If I had it my way, I think I'd have him as a six, getting a proper eight that can contribute in the final third as well, and then just let him be that anchor in front of the brilliant, the brilliant pairing of Saliba and Gabriel, and then you've got a trio that is really hard to play through. And I just want to say a really big thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, actually hit the links right here to watch more content like this, including my Football First podcast, which drops every Monday to Friday at 6am. And I know it's annoying, I am really sorry to have to ask, but if you want to show support to the channel, hitting the like and subscribe buttons help promote the content much more than you could possibly know. Thanks again.